Hello League Faithful! Welcome to another installment of the Wood Tier Training Academy. I am your instructor, Leo Rito Sukio, and today we'll be discussing vision and vision control. I'd like to begin by discussing the purpose and importance of vision, also how it influences the flow and pace of the game. At a base level, establishing vision in the right places will grant your team information. This can range from enemy locations, such as where the jungler might be headed, knowledge of objectives, such as dragon, rift herald, or baron, and it can help you safely secure your flanks. Keeping track of enemy movements is important as it enables shifts in strategy. So if your team can see the enemy team working down Dragon, you can either try to steal, set up to directly contest, or take an objective across the map as a consolation prize. Likewise, if you can see the enemy jungler heading bot lane, your jungler can then decide whether or not to counter gank, or to have bot lane play reserved and then set up an advantage in another lane. So naturally, if vision grants you information, which can then decide how you conduct your gameplay, maintaining this vision permits you a longer period of time to do so. Additionally, since vision grants you information, it functions the same way for your opponents whenever they acquire any. This is where the importance of vision denial comes into play. By denying enemy vision, you're denying them information, so the same advantages you're hoping to achieve through vision are the ones you wish to revoke from them. This enables your team to maneuver in stealth, gank efficiently and without warning, possibly take objectives swiftly without contest, or pressure Baron and Dragon to force fights later on in the game. Ultimately, through a balance of vision and vision denial, that's how we achieve what is called vision control. Now that we've outlined what vision can accomplish, we better understand why it's important to maintain it, control it, and deny it from our opponents. So let's quickly examine all of the tools that will enable our conquest for vision. For starters, there are trinkets, the most common of which being the warding totem, which consumes one charge to place a stealth ward revealing the surrounding area for 60 to 120 seconds, dependent on your level. Typically, this is what everyone will start with, as it enables early game local vision, and it can help spot out ganks or potential roams. Next up is the sweeping lens. This summons a drone at a target location for 6 seconds revealing and disabling invisible enemy wards and traps. This is typically picked up by the support after purchasing their warding item, so a sight stone or the eye of the blank series of items. This assists in vision denial, and other members could also swap for this trinket later on in order to assist with vision control. So for the early game, it feels a little restricting because there are only two trinkets that you can utilize. However, upon hitting level 9, you gain access to advanced trinkets. For instance, your sweeping lens can be upgraded to an oracle alteration. This summons a drone that will escort you for 10 seconds, revealing invisible wards and traps, as well as cautioning you against any stealth champions that are nearby. This is much more effective than the sweeping lens by itself because this travels with you so it allows for scanning in motion, which means you don't have to be pigeonholed to one location while you're searching for wards. You also gain the ability to swap out your warding totem for the farsight alteration. This reveals an area up to 4,000 units away and it also reveals any enemy champions hit for 5 seconds with the exclusion of stealth champions. It does place a farsight ward indefinitely. This is an excellent tool to use from behind in order to gain safe vision without going near any potential threats, which makes this more than suitable on an ADC who would love to survey the landscape but also be distant from danger. This trinket can also help assist in checking objectives such as Baron or Dragon whenever they are unwarded and you fear the enemy team might be doing them. The last note about trinkets is that they're absolutely free and vision can gain you so many advantages, so it's always the worthy investment to utilize them properly. Now that we've reviewed trinkets, it's only fair that we discuss other items that help contribute to our conquest for vision and vision control. For starters, there are pink wards. These are a special type of ward that reveal surrounding areas as well as expose invisible enemy wards, traps, or champions that are nearby. It's really undervalued considering the sooner you get one, the more you protect it and watch over a certain area. It is well worth the investment of 75 gold. They also help gain complete vision control over an area by revealing whether or not the enemy team has vision, which you can then remove from the equation anyway. Following that is a sight stone and consequently the Eye of the Oasis, Watchers, and Equinox items. They each store three charges, consuming one charge in order to place a stealth ward, which functions similarly to the warding trinket. It's primarily a support item, and also it's advantageous, as carrying more wards will help maintain vision for a longer period of time. Lastly, we have the Tracker's Knife. This is a jungle item that has an active that operates exactly the same as Sightstone, except it only holds two charges as far as wards go. It's an optional and situational choice, but it does help overall assist in the vision control around the map as junglers are the most mobile early game. Beyond items, there are facets of Summoner's Rift, primarily in the jungle, that also contribute to vision and vision control. 
First up is the Scuttle Crab. There are two of these creatures, residing on either side of the river respectively. When killed, it gives the team responsible a fixed area of vision as well as a speed shrine in front of either Dragon or Baron Pit. Next up is the Wolf Camp. Upon smiting the big wolf, it releases a guardian spirit orb that illuminates a section of the jungle and seeks out trespassing opponents. This can help you guard your jungle and be sure no one is lurking about, and it's also great for defensive vision or when behind, as you can smite it, leave your jungle, and if anyone intrudes, it will spot them out for you without you having to be physically present. Finally, we get to the raptor camp. Upon smiting the large raptor, you're granted a buff that gives you true sight for a limited amount of time, revealing invisible traps or wards as you walk around, quite similar to the Oracle Alteration. Now, before moving on to warding responsibility and ward locations, I must emphasize that the liberties you can take are dependent on your champion as well as your team composition, which are topics that I will definitely get into another day. Always respect the fog of war and any potential MIAs. All right, with that out of the way, we can jump right into warding responsibility and the best locations for it. In the past, the burden of warding was primarily thrown onto the support player. However, since Riot implemented some changes and each player is limited to three stealth wards and one pink ward at any given time on the map, the responsibility is best divided amongst the entire team in order to establish the best vision control. So depending on the phase of the game, each player's duties will vary. For instance, within the laning phase, each individual laner is responsible for guarding their own flank and the jungler should ward the jungle entrances or their own buffs in order to spot any potential invades or steal attempts. Once the laning phase breaks, there are many ways that you could ward, there's a lot of flexibility, but a few good ideas would be, if you're split pushing, then you should ward as you push because if you cover your flanks and you could see the enemy coming, you could either back off in time, but if you can recognize that you cannot back off in time, you can either lead the enemy on a goose chase to waste their time, or execute to a tower so they get no kill credit. Also, with respect to map pressure and objective timers, you can maintain or prepare vision on the dragon and eventually the baron. This can be anyone's responsibility, but it's probably best suited to whoever is closer to the objective at that time, or who has the ability to ward it safely, such as an ADC with a farsight orb can safely ward dragon and not put themselves in any danger. My final suggestion, if no objectives remain, would be to either ward the enemy jungle if you're ahead or your own jungle if you're behind in order to watch the enemy movements. This will help keep you safe or help you abuse your lead. Now that we've reviewed warding responsibilities, let's develop good in-game habits by discussing primary ward locations. Let's begin by discussing warding in the laning phase. Obviously our main objective is to prevent the enemy from having successful ganks or roams, so let's break it down lane by lane and see the best places to drop a ward. For top lane, you either want to drop a ward in the river and or the tri-bush, whichever one is closest to you depending on the side that your team is on. It helps spot ganks and you could react accordingly. For mid lane, you want either or both of your river bushes warded. This way you can always see if the enemy jungler is lurking and trying to gank you. You should always also be wary of the side passages on either side of the river. For bottom lane, you always want to have either the river and or the tribush warded, prioritizing whichever one is closest to the side of the map that you started on. This aids in spotting out ganks again, and ideally you could reverse them or escape them before they even happen. You can also ward the lane brush furthest from the side you started on, which can prevent enemy lane ganks, and it also gives your top laner a place to teleport to if you get pushed in on. Next is the jungler. The last thing that you want while you're farming away in your jungle is the enemy lease in to invade, find you at your red, kill you, and then take your red buff. To prevent this, you might want to ward any of your jungle entrances. Good examples would be the bush that is above red buff if you started bottom side, and also if you started bottom side, the bush that is right above the mid lane on the blue buff side of the map. Another possible option for junglers would be donating wards to your laners who are receiving special attention from the enemy jungler. This way you can help them prevent any further deaths and spoil any future ganks. Let's move on to objectives and also highlight the fact that Dragon, Baron, and Rift Herald all have similar situations. In other words, any warding advice that applies to one will apply to every single one of them. It's always an exceptional idea to ward within the Dragon or Baron pit as well as in the front. 
This gives you direct vision of the objective and it allows you to see whether or not any enemy attempts to start either objective. Also, if you're going to secure the objective for yourself, it is a smart idea to ward behind enemy lines around either pit. So for example, if you started on the bottom side of the map and you wanted to secure Dragon, you could throw wards into the enemy jungle around their blue buff to make sure that no enemies are coming to contest the objective. Likewise, if you were going to secure Rift Herald or Baron, you could ward behind the Baron pit to make sure no enemies are coming around and trying to contest that either. At some moment in the game, it becomes abundantly clear who is demanding the lead and who is falling far behind. Oftentimes, appropriate and thorough vision can change the tides, however, how do you ward to maintain a lead, and how do you ward when facing a deficit? Which brings us to our final point, offensive vision versus defensive vision. So let's begin by discussing offensive warding. The purpose of offensive warding is to put deep wards into the enemy territory in order to monitor their movements and thus secure yourself some advantages by either getting a pick or rotating around the map and taking another objective. Primary locations would be anywhere within the enemy jungle that is most likely to reveal their actions or their pathing. By following this logic, it's also a great idea to drop a ward in the enemy mid lane where the jungle entrances intersect. This way, you can see if the enemy is pushing back out with minions or if they detour into their own jungle and then you have a better idea of where they're going. Now let's discuss defensive warding, which should primarily be done when you're behind in order to ensure your safety. So whenever safe, you would want to ward sections of your jungle that the enemy is likely to pass through. If you can spot out their location, you can avoid them entirely if they're grouped up, or if someone is being a cocky, arrogant opponent and they're in there by themselves, your team can get a pick. Since it would be very likely that your jungle is unsafe when you're behind, it is also a great opportunity to invest in a bunch of scrying orbs, as they are free to switch to, and you could definitely ward up your jungle from a safe distance while avoiding the fog of war and the possibility of a death brush. The last thing that you would really want to do is get picked off when behind, because then the enemy team can definitely abuse that advantage. So before we can conclude, I would like to just mention a few final tips, or things that I would like to emphasize. Number one, respect the fog of war. Just because you don't see something is there, doesn't mean it isn't there. It's a really unsafe assumption and it could potentially get you killed. Number two, ward with caution in respect to the enemy lead and or their abilities. Number three, never face check a brush. You start off the match with a trinket so you'd never have an excuse to do so. In conclusion, vision grants information on enemy whereabouts and helps you strategize or react accordingly. Through a variety of tools, you can establish vision and deny it from your foes. We've identified prime warding locations, but remember that you could essentially ward anywhere that makes sense. If it's liable to grant you information, it's a beneficial warding location. Vision plus vision denial is equivalent to vision control. This enables objectives easily secured. You can set up ambushes or picks. Also, everyone should ward wisely whenever they are able to. Don't pigeonhole it to just one player. This concludes Wood Tier Training Academy Vision and Vision Control, The Basics. I am Leo Rito Sukio, and I am signing out.